So uh, the order of tonight's business is that first we have a public hearing for the uh, uh, Pepperwoods Properties LLC project. And once the public hearing has been completed, we'll go on to our traditional uh, planning board meeting. And we will then again visit the Pepperwood Properties LLC project. And then we will have two new presentations for uh, projects on West State Street. And then we'll finish the rest of our agenda after that point. So that's the order of business tonight. Uh, I see Craig is joining us now by video as well. Uh, so recognizing a quorum in place in person um, in City Hall, uh, I'd like to declare the public hearing for Pepperwood Properties LLC, site plan number 04 22, 2801 West State Street in session. Uh, could you read the roll, please? J.R. Benyon? Here. Mark Sabella? Here. Mary Fay? Here. Reed McElfresh? Here. Craig Polson? Here. Thomas Barnes? Here. And could you read the legal notice, please? Legal notice, public hearing, application of Pepperwood Properties, LLC, 2801 West State Street, only in New York, uh, September 26, 630 p.m., only on municipal building and a Zoom public hearing and meeting link uh, via the City of Olean's website under the planning board page. Please take notice that in accordance with the provisions of section 9.1.6 of the zoning law of the City of Olean, a public hearing will be held on the date and time specified above in connection with an application that has been filed and received by the planning board of the city of Olean for a preliminary site plan review and approval of a project at the above noted location. A copy of the preliminary site plan application is on file for inspection in the city clerk's office of the city of Olean, Frank Caputo city clerk, Carrie Kerper program coordinator. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I, I would uh, note that the purpose of the public hearing is to help inform the public uh, about the project that is in front of us, the site plan application that's in front of us. And uh, we'd like to uh, be able to answer questions that the, the public has and receive their comments on the project. And uh, uh, when the applicant is, is present with us uh, to, to get any answers back from the, uh, from the applicant for the public. So um, our, our process is that uh, if you are here from the general public, uh, wanted to make a question or make a comment or ask a question, uh, please uh, raise your hand and I'll call on you and I'll ask you to state your name and address for the record and then uh, ask you to go ahead with your comment. So uh, at, at this point, are there any members of the public here who would like to uh, ask a question or make a comment? Yeah. Check. Go ahead. Uh, Anthony Howard, 1671 Park Street, Olay, New York. Uh, my question is, who am I asking the question to? Uh, the board. Oh, okay. Um, the, the original Kmart plan came with, it went through litigation and it came with, there's a, a wooded space between Park Street and the Kmart building the street was not supposed to be used for tractor trailers and the wooded, wooded space is supposed to be left there in the original plan with Kmart, with Benderson development. And I was wondering if that was gonna continue with the new, whoever's, so are there your plans or? No. 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 Um, the, I don't see Corian. Corian, no, I've been looking will he, for him. Will he be on the floor? There, there's no indication in the site plan that. I have, yeah, I haven't seen, I, I, I haven't seen the site plan, but I know what the original, original agreement was and it did go through litigation. Yeah, uh, it, as I was saying, there's no indication in the site plan that is in front of us that there's going to be any tractor trailer access to the east end of the building. Uh, all the tractor trailer access comes on the west end of the building and around the, around the back from the uh, access from the west, not the okay. east. 
I think that's opposite, Tom. No, it's opposite. It will be east. Park Street's on the, on the west side. East. Yeah, it's actually that's, zone. It's actually in Allegheny. I, I, I know the land address, address but it's in. What I'm saying is that the site plan does not show any access to the building for tractor trailers on the west side of the building. That's what I'm saying. Right. Right. Correct. Correct. Right. 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 I see the that. access to the. Uh, uh, for, for tractor trailers to the loading docks on the east end of the building and on the yeah, south side of the is, building. This is actually on, on the, on the east end of the building. Yeah. And it was agreed upon with the, the neighborhood and hired a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there yet. I'm not sure. okay. And um, this is supposed to stay or was in the original plan. So, so it is not even in this plan set. Okay. It, what's highlighted is. Okay. So that helps. Yeah, I think so. So in, in other words, what we're what we have in front of us to approve does not include any tractor trailer access on the on the uh, on the west end of the building. Okay. So uh, if 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 they're going to do tractor trailer access on the west end of the building within the city boundaries, that would be something that we would be able to uh, proscribe through code enforcement in the in the in the city police, and if they wanted to do it in the uh, town of Allegheny, that's outside of our jurisdiction anyway. So, okay. but you know, what they're showing us and what they describe to us in terms of uh, tractor trailer access to the uh, Hobby Haven loading dock, which is on the south side of the building, uh, that would come around the west, west side of the building. So that's what we're working with. Are you satisfied with that, sir? Yes, thank you. Okay. Other questions? There was someone else? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Leanne Deneen. I live at 121 South 26th Street. Um, and my only concern is questioning if they're going to be looking at doing anything with the traffic pattern or doing a traffic study. Um, we have quite a bit of congestion in that area as it is. Um, so I was just wondering, um, I'm all for all the things that are coming, but if they're looking at any way to um, limit the uh, problem for people getting out of their personal, you know, their uh, normal streets of access. So, you know, we're coming and going out of 26th Street now is very difficult um, turning either way. Um, and just with additional uh, buildings and restaurants and whatever down there, um, if they would be looking at a traffic study, changing light patterns, adding a light somewhere, uh, something like that. Um, when I'm coming home from work, it takes two to three lights at Schultz light just to turn left because of the traffic um, that's already there. So um, just that's our main concern is that traffic pattern. Carrie, do you want to feel that the traffic study aspect of this? Um, yeah, prior to the meeting started, I had explained that the city didn't require a traffic study be done um, due to the fact um, from code enforcement's review and determination because it was filling the commercial space that was previously existing with the Kmart. So it didn't affect that location. And it was our is our it was our uh, our this board's um, evaluation during the environmental review process, which has already been completed, that um, the the additional traffic from this uh, uh, new retail operation would not would not uh, present any significant adverse impacts related to traffic impacts. Now, um, my suggestion to you is that if you find um, with this and with uh, the other uh, two projects that are, you know, potentially coming online as a consequence of uh, uh, the two projects, the two other projects that we have being presented to us uh, later on in the meeting, um, if, if those, if, if you if you find that uh, traffic can, 
is, is getting increasingly more difficult, what I would do is uh, contact your alderman and ask your alderman to uh, to propose a traffic study and um, take take a look at the impacts in terms of access and uh, uh, to and from uh, the side streets. Now, I, I know several years back, New York State DOT uh, did a traffic study on the entire corridor. Now, I don't know whether or not that was an element of the state's traffic study, but uh, if if there needs to be uh, another study undertaken, then the council should be the one that would move forward with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah and that was um, something else to know is, um, it, Tom, I had said prior to the meeting and, you know, just to go on the record for it is, um, I had asked, you know, that they speak during this public meeting. So then I can also relay the sentiments and um, the, the concern to our new public works director and see if there's something that he could go and review with the current data that's online with DOT and see if there's something that we could address, whether it be, I mean, I understand there's something more significant than just the timing of a light. However, it would start the conversation with the right department and then he can also, you know, get with the council president and or the mayor if, you know, to address that and to possibly have that um, study updated with the Department of Transportation. That sounds like a great approach, Carrie. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Because I, I think I think with these other projects moving forward, that, and that, 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 that is okay. such a, that is not a good area right here. Okay. I mean, you know, just so I think that I don't know if the council or the DPW really has that. That's yeah, that's really, more. I think they really need to look at that whole, sure. you know, especially since they've narrowed that down. You got two lanes, you know, a two lane, right. and then you got a, that one narrow lane right there. And maybe we should refer turning. to what it was because, I mean, when that got changed, I expressed my complete yeah, and utter concern and displeasure for the change in it. But yeah, hold on. It, it might because that's, <laughs> well, you know, we got this other project. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a bottleneck. So I think that will be helpful and I will um, relay that information. But if you would also in turn contact your alternate as well. Thank you. Great, great comments and great considerations. Are, are there other questions or comments from the public? I'd like to note that um, uh, for state law, this is the, the public's uh, opportunity to make uh, comments or questions. So once we close the public hearing, um, your opportunity for doing that is over. So don't be shy. I guess that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is your opportunity uh, to, to step forward and, and ask questions or make comments. We, we want to hear from you. That's why we I hope you. Yeah. Um, I have a key. And make so I'll, I'll ask one final time if there are any comments or questions. Okay, I, I'm not hearing any. So I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Second. Mary and Reed. Okay, uh, any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Okay, uh, let's move. Thank in. you. Thank 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 No, we're going right into the regular meeting to discuss it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Tom. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, recognizing a quorum, I'd like to declare the, the uh, planning board meeting uh, for today open. Please show the same person's uh, board members present. 
And let's see. First item is uh, reading and approval of the September 12th meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Mark and Gia. Okay, any discussion, any revisions? I, I had a question just for clarity on uh, it's, uh, page three near the end uh, where it notes Mr. Barnes inquired about excavating project on Homer Street. Is that Homer or is it on Franklin or Johnson? Franklin. It's the corner of Johnson and Franklin. Right, I think we yeah, should correct that. 350 Franklin. Isn't that Mr. Sabella that inquired about that? Actually, I think it was me. No, it was It was about the cleanup, the brownfield cleanup. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned yeah. what was yeah. going on. I initially, I think, asked about it. Okay. Yeah. okay, we can change it. Okay. So those two revisions. Any Anything else? Okay. Uh, the motion with those two revisions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Our first item of old business, Pepperwood Properties, LLC, site plan number 4-22, 2801 West State Street. We've been through this. This looks pretty straightforward, actually. The only condition I think we were talking about is uh, uh, downward shielded uh, night sky pole lighting. Is there anything Brad. else? Is there any other condition that we were talking about? Can't you just leave a condition that you leave the wooded area alone? It's not in the city. We can't condition property outside the city limits. It's Algene. It's right Algene. I don't know. That's right. Yeah, I mean, like, we could say it, but I don't think it would hold up anywhere. Yeah, they've, they've got the existing. Uh, I thought it was a loading street, dock access with access from the east. I don't think they'd want to go to the expense of doing anything else. Right. I mean, that there's only what? What is it like? Uh, a five foot setback on the east side to to the city line. Is that, is that what it is? I don't have that it used to it was. <laughs> Certainly not enough for a dry aisle. They need to go into the town, you know, for a, a dry aisle and, and to swing around, swing way, way around that. So Yeah, I just asked because I think he was also stating that they can't do anything with the wooded section that has to remain un, unchanged. That's why I asked that. Yeah, but... You know, it, I, I agree with you that it would be nice if we could do something about that, but since the trees are in the in the town, we really can't, so. Anything else? All right, I, I, unless uh, the board has any other issues you'd like to bring forward on this, I, I'd entertain a motion to approve this as submitted with the, the one condition regarding the pole lighting. So moved. Meeting Craig. Craig would agree. Okay, made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, let's move into our two projects. Uh, the first one under new business is uh, OEN 2020 LLC site plan number 05-22. 2810 West State Street. There's someone here from the applicant? Yes. Yes. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Wassel. I'm with Ellic Development. I'm here tonight to discuss the Pose Retail Plaza at 2810 West State Street. 2810 West State Street is in front of the Holiday Park Center, which is uh, located nearby 
the West State Street uh, Independence Drive intersection in between Perkins restaurants. I mean, I believe that is a liquor store next door. Uh, on site, we are looking to uh, construct a 2,600 square foot uh, Starbucks and uh, across uh, the parking lots, there will be a future pad site for an additional retail building. There'll be uh, 3,600 ish square feet. So you guys have some hard copies as well. So in our uh, application package, we did include uh, two renderings of the proposed Starbucks. Like I mentioned, it'd be a single story. Uh, it will feature uh, storefront glass on the West State Street elevation and then on the East elevation. It'll have black brick wrapping around that elevation as well. Uh, the signature Starbucks wood siding above the canopy and then a uh, gray CMU in the black uh, the back of the building and behind the brick as well. Uh, there will be a drive through on the west side of the building. Uh, it had queuing for approximately 25 cars. Uh, Starbucks and the future retail pad site will share a parking lot that has approximately 46, uh, 46 spaces, including four handicapped spaces. Uh, the parking lots will be interconnected with Holiday Park Center. Um, this will allow additional curb cut access along West Sea Streets and out, out onto Independence Drive as well. Uh, does the board have any questions? Yeah, that was my, uh, my question was, is that, is the queuing of the, uh, the drive through they will be able to get out into the... Yeah. So if they come back around through the drive lane here, yeah, they can right here. Yeah, that's going to line up with the existing okay. uh, parking lots for Holiday Park Center. So they can come back through and then actually right here on the edge of the plan. We actually on the second page here, right behind it, it's drawing C one oh C one oh one on the plan shows the overall site and it shows how it will cut, uh, connect into the Holiday Park Center and come out out onto. Uh, Independence is there on the west side. Okay. Because I know they will help with queuing because I know up to speed, of course, with the Tim Hortons. Yes. It, it, it is terrible queuing. Yeah, queuing in the morning is, will be the busy time for them. Like and always, and like all the other the time, Forget it. It's, yeah. it's, that was, um, <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that, I think that will help yeah. alleviate some of that. Yeah, we'll have, to move there will be, a, a, that parking yeah, yeah. there will be signage up there to help with that as well. Yeah. Going through it. Yeah. Carrie, one of the things that I'd like to uh, to note is that the uh, zoning permit application uh, mentions only the Starbucks element. It doesn't it doesn't specifically state the 3,650 square foot pad element for the two future buildings or the the, the one future building that will house the two businesses. And and what I'd I'd suggest that you do is you take a copy of that. Um, site plan application and hand write in that and have uh, have Jerry sign that, you know, initial those uh, those changes. So we have uh, uh, something in writing that, that specifies uh, both buildings on the site as part of the zoning permit application. I'm doing it right now. While she's doing that, you know, I would note that uh, the uh, uh, the commercial property in back of that is Holiday Park Center, and that's also owned by Ellicott Development. Uh, as you you might recall, uh, across the street when we were looking at the uh, Chipotle's and the urgent care, one of the things that I suggested would was that there be some sort of an easement or access agreement. Uh, to get through the adjacent property owner's parking lot. Uh, and here, because uh, this, this uh, site that we're looking at and Holiday Park Center are both owned by the same applicant, 
uh, it would seem like there might not be a need for an access agreement or an easement uh, to get to that uh, independent square access lane um, or to use the parking lot for uh, overflow parking should it be needed. Um, and and I, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the board uh, to make a finding of, of that um, lack of necessity because of the circumstances of the of the single ownership. Um, but I would recommend that Ellicott consider um, putting something like that in place so that if they ever uh, We actually do have that in place already. You do? Yes. Okay. Could you provide a copy of that? Uh, yeah, I can ask our attorney for a copy. All right. Then I guess we don't need the finding then, Carrie. <laughs> okay, noted. Okay. Do we want to ask um, for the parking spaces to be changed to the nine foot by 20 foot per code? No. No, I think, um, Tom, do you want me to address the nine by 20 as opposed to the nine by 18? Well, I, I would just want to point out that we have, what is it, a 25 foot drive aisle? And if we Pardon? went, if we went to a, uh, uh, a nine by 20, that on, on both sides of the, of the parking lot, that would take the drive aisle down to uh, 21 feet. And, uh, you know, I was talking with um, code enforcement this afternoon and, and with Carrie also, and uh, code enforcement feels that it's uh, more important to have the drive aisle than it is to have the uh, nine by twenties. And uh, Carrie pointed out in our conversation today that uh, although nine by 20 is the city code, nine by 18 is the state code. So, um, so what, mm -hmm. what, what I think Carrie was suggesting earlier today was that we go to a, uh, uh, we go to the state code and, and we uh, okay. provide as part of the approval, uh, uh, bring our approval of the parking dimensionality down to the state code nine by 18. Is that, is that pretty much cover it, Carrie? That does, yeah. I was going to suggest to members to vary to go from as opposed to doing our local code. We've done in the past that we've accepted the state code in lieu of. And um, I agree with Ryan because I mean, it just makes sense to have that drive aisle and to be having these things line up where they're at as they're um, being proposed. Yeah, because the, the code calls for the two way drive aisle to be 24 feet wide. Right. So you have to have that. And there's also precedent within the city where we have made that exception many, many times. Okay. Was that Reed that, that asked that question? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you all right with that, Reed? Yeah. Okay. Fine with me. Okay. I, 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 and I don't know if it's on the plans or not, is coming out of that driveway onto state. Is that right only, or are we going to try? We have it right now, so you can make both a left and a right out of there. I know. We, we've been around and around with this before. I, the I, right I, only I, coming out of it. I didn't hear the answer that you gave. Go ahead. I didn't hear the answer that you gave. Oh, oh right now, the exits, uh, curb cut exit on West State Street, it, you can make both a left and a right hand turn out of it. All right. Please continue, Mark. Okay, no, I, I, I was just thinking, maybe we need to look at the right only. I, I mean, I know I don't like that, but I think because of all these projects that we have right in that area right there, I, I think it's going to be disastrous if somebody's going to try to turn, turn left coming out of that parking lot right there, because especially the light backs up. You know, uh, Mark, I, I tend to agree with you, but... In, the last one that we did, right across, I know, I know. <laughs> we didn't do that. So it's hard for me to justify requiring 
Um, the, the precedence is, I guess, we, that we did before with the other one was um, we put a condition on it. If there is a problem, we have to re, we would revisit it. Well, let's hope this front traffic uh -huh. study were, I, I just, yeah. would be pending would look at all those. From the, when you go through the drive through are you able to loop back around the building to yep. get back to independence? Yeah, yeah you, you can yeah, walk I mean, through that's, so that's, it comes out in Most front. people are probably, yeah. Because they're trying to make a left out of there. I mean, that, that's. I think you could do it during off peak hours, yeah. but during peak, yeah. I wouldn't have the patience. I would hope. Yeah, I think most people would either and would just exit. And, and I think that's what we did. At, I can't remember which one. The other one. one. The the other one. Yeah, we just let it. Oh, yeah, 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 right, we right, did. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I like Mark's approach of the, the, the conditioning that uh, to re-review in the future. Uh, that way we put in the minutes documenting that that we would like to look at this again if uh, if it becomes an issue. You know, we, we learned uh, with the chicken barbecue project that we need to put these things in the minutes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would, uh, and, and, and that might give uh, that might give a little bit of options for the DPW if they end up having to make some changes down there. You know, I mean, if they really look at that whole area down there, there might be have to be some changes that really has to be made down there. Right, so I mean, I, only because I live down there and I drive that through back through there all the time. And it is, it's a, it's a, just a really, that needs to be like four lanes on each side coming out that way. You know? I liked it better when they had the yeah, yeah. I yeah. know. We oh, yeah. And they might have to just look at that again. Yeah. Just because. So, Tom, I, I have for now that the planning board would review the ingress and egress onto West State Street in the future if it becomes a problem. That would possibly be a finding at the next meeting. Yeah. Well, I think he means after it's open. The right? oh, yes. I'm sorry. I mean, I think you mean after it's open. This well, yeah, after it's open. Time. And then, yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden yeah. we see a lot of traffic. Oh, when I said people... make a finding, I mean, it'll be a condition. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. It'll be a condition. We would be fine with that condition. Okay. Okay. That was Jerry that said that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jerry was fine with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jeremy. 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 It's Jeremy. It's Tom, it's Jeremy. Okay. I'm sorry. Our planning board member is Jerry. Who was oh, okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> Are you called Jerry all the time? Yeah, well, so well, we're just oh, used yeah. to having one with us. <laughs> Maybe I should. Okay, and then Tom, I just had um, two more things yeah, go from ahead. our conversation with Code today. If it's okay to move forward into that conversation, yes, please. Okay. Um, so another finding that um, we believe that the planning board would want to make is to ensure that the uh, lighting is night sky compliant, shielded, and directed downward. So that would be yeah. a condition. Okay. And then the other thing, um, we weren't sure if there were five pole lights or six pole lights. We could find five, but um, in the materials it said there's six. So we were on a hunt for um, six poles and found five out of them. I believe there's five I can ask for clarification from our engineer. Okay. That's all we could yeah. find too. Because I know there's some lighting on the building itself, just over the doors, and that's just small sconces. That's what we were wondering if it was just a typo in the material. It might have been a typo. Okay. All right. Um, so. I, I want to treat this as uh, as a typo, and that um, what we would be reviewing and ultimately approving is five light poles, so that if there is a sixth, we want you to come back to us. Okay, so maybe maybe you can run that down before the next meeting. Yeah, I can find that out tomorrow. There's six foundations here. 
You found the six? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tom, there's six. <laughs> He's we Ryan and Carrie and I were looking at the episode. Can you go read? We read, read. got good eyes. You can see in that little print. Right, I can't so see them. Disregard. I can't either. I see six. <laughs> okay. I apologize. I see six. <laughs> okay. We should have called you earlier. <laughs> uh, Tom, that's all I had from our had. review uh, with code enforcement today. <clears throat> okay. Any other issues from the board? Uh, you know, I, I'll note that this has gone to uh, the departments and uh, we also have a letter from uh, uh, code enforcement discussing a number of the uh, uh, traditional issues that we look at like green space and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'll, note that, I'll, no, I'll note that stormwater is directed in the system and the project is served by uh, municipal water and sewer connections. Anything else from the, the board that you want to discuss on this one? The only comment is a typo on the Department of Public Works. It says 2801 West State on both page one and two. Yeah. 2810. And I would note also on the plan set that it says the project is located in Allegheny, New York. Hey, this really was for 2801, though. Oh. So we just didn't go over it before it got approved. Yeah, that is. I was sitting oh. there thinking about it when you had made mention to me of that. Oh, okay. And then this is we had the other approved, one. it really was 2801. Okay. And it was for a Pepperwood Properties. It really oh, was. Okay. And it's just ironically the other one. enough, this mm -hmm. is 2810. Okay. Oh, for start. Okay. Wow. Oh, am I no. oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Sorry. I'm so used to being, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was just yeah, so I'm used to not saying that. <laughs> you can have coffee with the baby's boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll note that the agenda says 2810. So uh, in the future, That's we. What it is. Yep. Yeah, it, it yeah, is. It is Pepperwood. The, is the other project. It's the other project, and that is correct. Just a there was no typo on yeah. that. It really was meant for that. 2810. Correct. Okay. I was so used to being confidential for so long. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I wasn't confused. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. It's the same difference. Okay. Yeah, look, uh, look, look, I got a mess up here. In, in, you know <laughs> in terms of, I, I forgot to ask this afternoon, Carrie, but um, this property is on a on a state highway, and also it's uh, it's very close to the municipal boundary. Is there mm -hmm. a, is there a need for uh, you know the statutory referral of the county planning board? No, Ryan and I chose not to. To be honest, um, we thought that we could handle it in house as opposed to holding anything up and um, just keeping with the county's agreement at our discretion. Okay, Kathy, let the uh, let the minutes reflect that. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, is there a reason for us to do anything other than an uncoordinated seeker review? No. Okay, I, I would entertain a motion then to declare the planning board lead agent for an uncoordinated seeker review. So move. move. No. Second. Craig and Mark. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Uh, we have in front of us the uh, short form. Carrie, do you want to walk us through that? Sure. Uh, part one, you'll find the project and sponsor information that we're familiar with being Ellicott Development at the uh, 2810 West State Street. Uh, question one, does the proposed action only involve the legislative adoption of a plan, local law, ordinance, administrative rule, or regulation? That's marked no. Two, does the proposed action require permit approval or funding from any other government agency? That's marked yes. 
that being the planning board and code enforcement. Three, uh, total acreage of the site of the proposed action is the 1.95 acres. Uh, the acreage to be physically disturbed obviously is under one acre, uh, so no SWIP is required, that's 0.9 acres. The total acreage of the project site and any contiguous properties owned by Ellicott is uh, approximately 4.28 acres. And number four, check all land uses that occur on or adjoining. Yeah, which one are you on? Oh, what are you on? What are you on? You've been on the wrong seeker? I'm on 2810. Was the revised one submitted? Your numbers don't jive. <laughs> number yeah, three is 1.66 1. 1. 6 6 acres. Yeah, that's not. I have a revised, you guys don't. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. it, the first page should have been replaced. Okay, one point also under this is that brief description doesn't have to be updated for the pad, too. Yeah, for the revised. Uh, it was just a zoning permit, but I can add that as well. So can you repeat those numbers you have? Yep, it's 1.95 acres. And then for 3A, 3B is 0.9 acres. And 3C is 4.28 acres. And then is okay to go on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, four is check all land uses that occur on or are adjoining or near the proposed action. A uh, commercial is checked. Do you want to check residential? Mm hmm. Yep. Um, Tom, I don't know if you heard that residential, suburban to be checked. Yeah. Works for me. Change is noted. Five is the proposed action A, a permitted use under the zoning regulations that's marked yes. B, consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan that's marked yes. Six is the proposed action consistent with the predominant character of the existing built or natural landscape that's marked yes. Is the site of the proposed action located in or does it adjoin a state listed critical environmental area that's marked no. AA, will the proposed action result in a substantial increase in traffic above present levels that's marked no. Are public transportation services available at or near the site of the proposed action that's marked no? Yes, right. Yeah. Um, Tom, we're going to um, make the change, mark that as yes, as the land area transit system um, goes by that location. Google didn't show it. Oh, and we're on Google now. I don't want to. Yeah. So they want to fill it out. Google didn't show any oh. um, bus stops or anything. Yeah. No, Kathy works on that with DOT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll work with DOT <laughs> and Google. So, um, are any pedestrian accommodations or bicycle routes available on or near the site of the proposed action that's marked yes? Before we leave this question, can we talk for a minute about uh, traffic volume levels and whether or not a traffic study <laughs> would be appropriate? Any comment, Jeremy? Uh, from our experience, for a project of this size, it would not cause too much traffic issue, especially with the traffic numbers already on West State Streets. Typically for a Starbucks or Tim Hortons along this area, it doesn't bring in new traffic for the, per se. It more or less takes the existing traffic and then they, re, they are going on their way to work or from work or in the middle of a route to stop and get coffee or go to a shop like this. Do you have any data from past experience about uh, the the actual number of projected uh, increased uh, vehicular trips on on a, a street like State Street? Not readily available to us, just from experience we have from developing stuff in the Western New York area and our conversations with Starbucks themselves. They, we none of us saw it, uh, the reason to go have a traffic study done. Well, since this was brought up in the earlier project, it it's something that I think that probably we ought to make certain that we pay some attention to. Um, I, I would suggest that perhaps you could come to the next meeting with some sort of at least estimation of vehicular or increased vehicular traffic. We had some data when they proposed 
the Tim Hortons out on East State. Did you pull that? Well, I'm the Chipotle people. Talk yeah, about that about was. Uh, yeah. That woman. Mm hmm. Yeah. So both of those. Yeah, they just, they're, they rattled off data that they had from DOT. That it's similar to what you're yeah. anecdotally saying. Because what they did, and I, I know what you're talking about, because they went to DOT and said, hey, do you want a traffic analysis or a study done? And DOT said no. Yeah. Um, and the reason being is they said it would be a local issue. And then code said, no, we don't want one done either because the applicant had provided the information with the current you can reach um, out to DOT. I think that would be best meeting. because yeah. then it had the current traffic um, data that was going through. And it, it was absolutely very similar to the conversation that Tim mm -hmm. Wharton's just said mm -hmm. is that we're pulling yeah. people in. Yeah. It's already existing. So maybe that would help to have that same conversation. We can do that before the next meeting. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, please continue, Carrie. Okay. Uh, we, I think we're on question nine. Does the proposed yes. action meet or exceed the state energy code requirements? That's marked yes. Uh, Ten, will the proposed action connect to an existing public-private water supply? That's marked yes. Will the proposed action connect to existing wastewater utilities? That's marked yes. 12A, does the project site container, is it substantially contiguous to a building archaeological site or district which is listed on the National or State Register of Historic Places or that has been determined by the Commissioner of Office of Parks, Rec, and Historic Preservation to be eligible for listing on the State Register of Historic Places? That's marked no. Is the project site or any portion of it located in or adjacent to an area designated as sensitive for archaeological sites of the New York State Historic Preservation Archaeological Site Inventory? That's marked yes. I, I would note that um, the site has been previously disturbed, previously built on. So, so noted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thirteen A. Does any portion of the site of, of the proposed action or lands adjoining the proposed action contain wetlands or other water bodies regulated by a fed, state, or local agency? That's marked yes. Would the proposed action physically alter or encroach into any existing wetland or water body that's marked no? That, yes, question there. What what water body are we referring to? Yeah, that's A. Uh, the state automatically filled that in as a yes. Uh, it was the creek behind the, Holiday Park. behind Holiday Park Center because the old Tax boundary for 2810 West State Street went all the way through to the rear and abutted the uh, creek or river in the rear there. But now it doesn't because yeah. of the holiday park. Yeah, got it. Uh, so it was the EAF mapper, Tom. Yeah, got it. Okay, please continue. Okay. Uh, 14, identify the typical habitat types that occur on or are likely to be found on the project site. It's Mark Suburban. Probably Mark Urban also. Read is that what you're saying? Okay. Tom noted 15. Does the site of the proposed action contain any species of animal or associated habitats listed by the state or federal government as threatened or endangered? That's marked no. Is the project site located in the 100 year floodplain? That's marked no. Will the proposed action create? Um, was there a question? Yeah, I, I'm curious that. On the EAF mapper, that there was no. Um, on fifteen, Tom. Yeah, uh, there were there were no. Uh, Any dangers? Dangers. No. Weird ones that we always have. Yeah. Are, especially since it picked up on the adjacency to Six Mile Creek. Yeah. He attached Maybe. the EAF mapper. Yeah. Obviously, that there's. You know, there's not going to be any real issues there because they relate to the creek, which is really not adjacent to the site or will be impacted by it. I'm just curious that that it didn't pick that, those up with the EAF mapper, given that it picked it up, picked up the adjacency to the creek. Yeah, because there's no on the next page. Right. Yeah, I don't know what to do. The DEC mapper populated the answers for those. Because it's in the front. Area. Oh, yeah, that's true. Too. It's in the front, not towards the back, because the building's going all the way across the Holiday Park, so it's probably because of the buffer. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, when I did it, I selected just the project boundaries on the mapper and automatically filled in the sure. room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's wetlands, so. Okay. Tom, are you satisfied with that? Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I, I was just wondering why it wasn't like that, but you know, as I said, even if there were some, you know, snail darters or something like that, it, it wouldn't be uh, germane to our particular project anyway. So it would be moot. Agreed. Okay. Um, I believe we are on 17. 17. Okay, thank you. Will the proposed action create stormwater discharge either from point or non-point sources? That's marked yes. Will stormwater discharges flow to adjacent properties? That's marked yes. Will stormwater discharges be directed to establish conveyance systems, runoff, and storm drains? That's marked yes. And the explanation is stormwater will run into the existing conveyance system into Holiday Park Center. Now, now the, the first part of that uh, question A on there, um, will it flow to adjacent properties? Jeremy, could you explain that a little bit further? Yeah, so uh, Holiday Park Center uh, is a separate tax parcel. So historically, it was three separate tax parcels. There was 2718 West State Street, which was the eastern end of the property, uh, 2810 West State Street, and 26, 26. it was uh, no, it was a uh, we it was some hundred and something Independence Drive, which oh. was just the, the entrance. entrance of that. So uh, even with it, uh, we've combined the other three the. Rust Holiday Park Center into a separate tax parcel. So uh, how the Starbucks pro uh, project is a separate tax parcel from Holiday Park Center. So that's the reasoning behind saying yes to that. So what you're saying is that this site, the stormwater from this site will flow onto the Holiday Park Center? Uh, it flows into, it's through the pipe system underground. It will uh, connect into the existing uh, conveyance system in Holiday Park Center. So the catch basins on our property underground. I, I that, but it, uh, on the surface, there won't be any surface water that flows onto adjoining parcels. Correct. It, it just, it would, uh, the way it's saying, oh, it would go into the catch basins on site, but. Yeah, that's a. I, I would almost want to answer that one. No, you know, that's that question. Yeah, because usually we we think about that going on to somebody else's property. Right on the like, surface. You know, you're building next to a residential yeah. area and all yeah. that water runs, but it's not, you know. Yeah, how many catch basins are contained on the site? I believe. The new site, yeah. <laughs> there are six. Wow. Okay. And one is the northerly one is right on the property line. Okay. Before it's adjacent to it. Right, right before it goes into the other part of the park. Yes. Lot. Yep. Yeah, so it'll be minimal, I think. I would yeah, expect. you won't have a lot going in. No. Yeah, running over to that area. No. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And even if there did, uh, there are catch basins in the Holiday Park. Yeah. Park yeah. Park. No, I, I, one of the reasons I ask is because that area was notorious previously uh, prior to, uh, oh, it was actually in the adjacent property um, behind where like Domino's is. There used to be flooding back there like crazy. It used to pile, pond up about 18 inches in the old parking lot. And when they filled all of that area in with grass, um, that whole strip between the driveway into the uh, Holiday Park West and the Perkins, that was all, or, or up to Boleyn, I should say, or up to Perkins, that was all just, it would pond back there like crazy. I used to ride our bikes through it when I was a kid. When a big rainstorm, okay. but it's mitigated now. I, I get with the new catch basins and piping that's in there. 
Yeah. They had a project with where there was going to be an Arby's located where the Domino's is currently at one point, And that was an issue for them to come back to us. Or if you recall, Tom, um, they were supposed to address that stormwater issue, just confirming it. And then they never came back. Right. That was the contingent on the approval. And then they never did. Mm. So that was the only reason I was asking, but I think you've got it taken care of with what you've got and, here. And, and they never, uh, the, uh, was that the Wing City Grill? Yeah, it was Wing City Grill. No, was this was the this former was Arby's owner. Uh, that was the former Arby's owner, yes. Oh, right, right. But they yeah. were talking about putting an Arby's in the space where the uh, Domino's and Nail Salon or whatever are there now. Yeah, I, I'm okay with flow from this. Yeah. South north, you know, my my consideration is mostly will there be any flow to the east and west sides, uh, east and west adjoining properties? I guess that's a question for you, Jeremy. No, it wouldn't be with the grading. We have everything sloped so it would go to our catch basins on site. And that includes the dry vials? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm I'm okay with that, but I would suggest we might want to change the answer of 17A to uh, no. Noted. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Please continue. Is I an 18? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does the proposed action include construction or other activities that would result in the impoundment of water or other liquids? That's marked no. 19, has the site of the proposed action or an adjoining property been the location of an active or closed solid waste management facility that's marked no? Has the site of the proposed action or an adjoining property been the subject of remediation ongoing or completed for hazardous waste that's marked no? Everybody okay with part one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to part two. Uh, you know what the carries filled in the answers to these. Uh, 11 questions, she's marked no or small impact may occur. Give you a moment to look through that, see whether or not uh, you have any issues with any of those. Please speak up if you do. Everyone okay with those? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, we'll move on to part three. Uh, given what we've discussed here, I would entertain a motion, or I would, enter, yeah, I'd entertain a motion to make a finding that the project will pose no significant adverse environmental impact, and accordingly to uh, authorize the issuance of a negative declaration on the project. So moved. Second. Reed and Jr. Made and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Okay, now I will entertain a motion to make a finding that we have a completed application. And so moved. Second. Mark and Mary. Mark made and seconded. Any discussion on the pro on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Uh, now it's time to set a public hearing for this. Uh, Jeremy, what we usually do is, uh, you know, we meet every two weeks. So the next, you know, uh, it's actually the second and fourth Mondays of the month. So what would that be for October? Yeah, Tom, that's one thing, um, you know, I didn't catch earlier when we spoke, the building will be closed on that second Monday um, in observance of Columbus Day. So uh -huh. we would need to hold a special meeting. Um, I do believe that on the 17th, um, 
or I don't know if members pushed it to the 24th. I don't know what the schedule is like for construction timeline. Um, uh, for construction timeline, uh, we are looking to start later this year, if okay. possible, and then we say approximately it'll take 10 months or so okay. to construct it once we get started, pending approvals. So okay. does, uh, does, does uh, could you wait till the 24th of October for an approval from us or will that put a crimp in your construction schedule and we should do this on the 17th? We would prefer to do it earlier than that if possible. We prefer the 17th just so yeah, hopefully this year looks like it's getting colder a little faster. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that if the board is all right with that. Special meeting. I'm okay. Everyone. It's not a Bill's game. I set up a meeting and it's um, like <laughs> Bill's game, but they're all like, Ow. <laughs> okay. So October what? Seventeen. Okay. So what that would mean is that we would set a public hearing on the seventeenth at six thirty. Does that work for you, Jeremy? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, before I ask for a motion to set that, Carrie, could you explain to him the uh, public notification? Oh, sure. So um, our city assessor's office will prepare a radius. Um, we typically will have that list done. Kathy will be emailing it to you guys um, by Wednesday morning. And, and it will come with a memorandum with directions, and then it will come with the public hearing notice that you provide to those property owners within that radius. Um, and all you do is put your name, address, brief description of the um, project proposal. And then there's a certification form saying that you did indeed uh, mail those via regular USPS um, prior to Friday. Okay. But in this case, you will have one extra week, so it would be the following Friday. That's it. They need they need that ten days of notice for this to be uh, yeah. to work. Okay, so uh, that that all work for you, Jeremy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll ask for a motion to set the public hearing on the seventeenth at six thirty. Motion. Second. Mayor and Jr. Made and seconded. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Okay, we will see you uh, on the 17th for this project. I'm assuming you're going to be presenting on the 2101 West State as well? Yes, I am. Okay, so we'll see you right now then. <laughs> <laughs> Time to move on. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let you get your plan set there. I'm gonna take a yeah. gonna take two minutes of, for a break. I'll see you guys. Or do we want to wait for Mark to come back? Um whatever you would like. He said he just needed to make a brief call. Okay. While he's doing that, can we make a change on the zoning permit application? Yeah. Um right now it's saying it's other commercial real retail. I think it should be multi family with what, 42 units. Oh, you know why we did it that way? Um, yes, because that's what's currently there. And they don't intend to split the parcel. Um, so that's why we had them fill it out is what's happening there. Um, why? But I mean, we can add that in addition to, do you think? Yeah. So um, do you want, um, if you turn to the zoning permit application, um, you would add um, a multi-family dwelling and then the number of units in addition to the other with the commercial retail. I guess I'm not following you. What, what, which project are we discussing right now? The new one, 2101, the housing. Okay, now what are you suggesting? So Reed suggested if you go to page one of the zoning permit application, um, question number one, it says, please check one. It says other business, please describe commercial retail. Sorry. Okay. 
so he's suggesting adding a multifamily dwelling and the number of units. <clears throat> I, I, no, where, where are we? Number one. Page one of the zoning permit application. It says other, okay, other, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not certain why that, that was uh, commercial retail in the first place. We um, just had them put what was existing. All right, so I made that change. Okay. All righty. And how many units under the first Four phase? Two, right? Uh, first phase is 24, and the second phase is an additional 20. Okay, so you're going to do the two 12s. Yep. First, yep. Okay. The two twelve on the east side. Yeah. And I, I would note that the entire parcel all the way out to State Street is owned by Ellicott Development. Uh, yes. 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 So, so there's, again, there's no, there's no need to get uh, the easements. Yeah, yeah, or, or an agreement to guarantee access. But do you have something like that in place or? We do not because it is one tax parcel. Okay. In this instance. Well, if, if they're ever sold off, that, that would be something that would have to be put in place. Yeah, if we ever ever get subdivided or portion of the property gets sold, that would be, get put in place uh, at that time. Is that is Ellicott prepared to uh, allow any overflow parking in the front parking lots? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where's the where's the ingress and egress going to be? Uh, it'll be the we'll be using the exist, uh, existing ingress egress along West State Street and uh, where the traffic light is. Okay. You just come back out. Yep. Like how far? How far into that property will you be going? Uh, for you own it all. We own it all for everything. Tell me that once the buildings are up, it will basically yep, go all, all the way back. Pretty much go all the way back to West Henley. It'll probably be back where my finger is. Okay. It's probably okay. the edge of the building. So yeah, um, we have waited. So if you just want to start oh, at the sorry. very beginning, oh, yeah. that's okay. I'm yeah, if you want to start at the beginning, and then we'll follow. <laughs> <laughs> before we move, before we move into that, I would note for. Um, for the minutes and to piggyback on Mark's comment that um, there specifically is no um, planned um, or, or uh, uh, there's no planned egress ingress onto the paper Henley street on the south side of the project. And um, we are not reviewing that because it's not part of the site plan application. So if that ever were contemplated in the future, that would have to come back to us again. So there is no, not on the end of that call. No. That's just a paper street back there right now, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I drove by there before the meeting. Yeah, it's fairly paper, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. Right. We, didn't, we didn't determine it really was the street. Yeah, right. Yeah. So not to city standards. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jeremy, do you want to make the presentation here for us? All right. So, uh, so right now we're in uh, discuss 2101 West Street Street. As, as we have already mentioned, we are looking to construct approximately 42 uh, residential apartment units over the course of two phases. Uh, 2101 West State Street is located between South 19th and 20, South 21st Streets. Uh, in front, we do have two commer existing uh, commercial retail building. One, it, uh, Aaron, I believe, is on the east side of the property, and then on the other side, it's a multi-tenant building anchored by Little Caesars. Uh, in the rear of the property right now, it's a uh, vacant land that's all uh, heavily treated. Uh, and then adjacent to our property is the uh, bike trail, I believe, yes. next door. Uh, so we are looking to construct the two 12 unit apartments along the east side of the property and phase one, uh, we are looking to construct 
uh, this project, uh, that phase one on a similar timeline as the Starbucks. So depending on weather condition and approvals, hopefully later this year, uh, we anticipate construction to take 12 months. Uh, the 12 unit buildings will be feature a mixture of one, two and three bedroom units. Uh, the, on the ends of the 12 units buildings, there will be uh, four townhomes that are by level. Uh, there will be two on each side of the building. They will have their own private garage and parking in front of that garage for each unit. Uh, they, both all four apartments buildings will share a parking lot as well. Uh, the apartment units will have uh, patios as well. Are any of the uh, are there any of the apartment units going to be single story units? Yes. Yeah, so the uh, apartment units in the main the center building, so like the eight unit building, uh, those will all be single level apartments. You know, so then they'll have a center staircase that will walk up, and then each of them will have their own separate entrance into their apartments. There'll be four apartments on the first floor and four apartments on the second floor for the eight unit building. It'll be the same thing for the 12 unit buildings. They'll have the exact same layouts. The only difference between the eight unit building and the 12 unit building is the 12 unit building has the townhomes and beds. Uh, all, build, all the buildings will have a, a weather tech or cedar, uh, certainty main street siding. Uh, we'll have a uh, two tone scheme. It'll be Heatherstone and Savannah Wicker currently. You may change that in a couple, uh, couple of weeks depending on how we see, we, that's the color scheme we have for our 10 unit apartment building we have improved on the Harbor Freight site in Allegheny. Um, that is all I have for you guys. So if you guys have any questions, we can go through them. Gary, why don't you go through the list of things we talked about today? Okay. Uh, what, I'm sorry. Okay. When I looked at that. Well, what's the regulations on parking for an apartment building? I mean, they could. It, it's in um, okay. it's in the memorandum that was provided. They needed thirty-seven parking spaces plus two handicap accessible, um, and they had fifty-one spaces available and two handicap accessible. Oh, okay, I, I I would note that if you were looking at the plan set, the plan set and the notes. Yeah, says, yeah the plan set because I says yep. says there are eighty-three required. And there's not. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was looking at it. But, you know, yeah, we weren't okay. sure why it said that, but Ryan confirmed again today. They 37 are required plus two handicap, and they provided 51 plus two handicap. And that will be good. That will even be good once all the buildings are up. Yes, that okay. is for every phase. Yeah, both phases. Yes, absolutely. Um. Now. <clears throat> the one question, um, well, I guess one finding that Tom and Ryan and I discussed that possibly the board would want to take into consideration is that the lighting be night sky compliant, shielded, and directed downward. And then the uh, one question um, that Tom had raised is why there's no pole lighting. And if this is like the new way of um, developing with without a monstrosity of poles, if that was just the design involved. So when uh, I was talking to our engineer, he felt just saw from, from what their lighting consultant said from having the wall sconces on there, we had adequate lighting. Okay. And if we need, if we feel in the future that we need additional lighting just from the rear of the commercial buildings and that the wall lighting that would be on the building, if we feel that we need additional in the future, we can come back to the board and okay. have that. Are there normally pole lightings in residential? They're not. They're it's not depends like on the size. Because yeah. there isn't any. Yeah. So it really depends on the size of a parking lot. But right. in this case, with it being uh, two rows and a building on each side, uh, typically the wall the wall sconces on the building provide enough lighting to cover the parking spaces and the sidewalks. Okay. Yeah. My my concern was basically just with the uh, uh, first security. You know, people feeling feeling safe in the parking lot, mm -hmm. so it was well lit. And secondly, uh, 
uh, safety with respect to uh, uh, vehicles being able to see pedestrians. So that's where I'm coming from in, in raising that point. Okay. Tom, are you okay with that then? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay. Um, one other thing I was um, noting, you know, to make a finding that we would again vary from our local nine by 20 uh, parking dimension requirement and um, take on and accept the state code parking spaces of nine by 18 as proposed on the site plan. And then. Um, the, uh, how wide is that drive aisle though? 25, 25. 25 feet. Okay. Craig, are you okay with that? Yeah, with that dimension. It just didn't look that way. I guess it does. I guess it does now. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. just, just, just to make certain that we're using the right language here. Um, the uh, In both cases, the earlier project and in this project, uh, we need we need to make a finding on the using the nine by eighteen uh, state code that that that's that that's um, adequate for our purposes, and that'll that, that'll be something that we will have to uh, memorialize with a motion in both cases, and that that'll be true. You know, we can do that today or. Uh, on the 17th, uh, but with respect to the uh, the downward shielded uh, wall pack lighting, uh, that's a condition as opposed to a finding. Okay. All right. Just want to get the terminology straight. Okay. Um, then the other thing was um, he explained the floor plan layout. That was a question. And um, any consideration to accommodate additional handicapped parking spaces? I mean, if you only need 37 and you have 51, it would seem like you'd want to at least. We can add more. That's at least that's a simpler request. We can add additional ADA spot in, in, in each building. You know, I mean, that that would uh, at least accommodate. Uh, uh, yeah, we can add one in front of each building. But you know, I, I would I would point out that if you've got uh, units in all four buildings that are going to be uh, single story apartments and first floor units, that those would be attractive to uh, uh, because of the tables and having uh, handicapped spots close by those buildings uh, would be. Uh, would, would would be advisable. Right now, the only two spots that you have are uh, off to the side of the eight unit building. And so, I mean, they're not even that close to the to the front entrances of the of the eight unit building. So it, yeah, if, if we could add, add a- The regulations, the regulations are only two yes. required. Yes. So I would think from a business standpoint, if they wanted to add them later, they could. I hate to have us condition of it if it's above what the regs are. That's my opinion. It, it, are these buildings, is there going to be like a main entrance on one of the, I yeah. see like the, the building in the top. It's like there's, there's a main entrance that you go, yep. would it be an elevator? No. So it says it is a uh, two stories. Uh, is, yeah. It's, so the first floor uh, units okay. and the center corridors for the eighth building. All of those, the bottom floor units will oh. be ADA accessible. Okay. So on site, we will have 16 ADA accessible apartments. Well, see, in, you know, in just that, that point exact, and you don't have enough handicap. If you're going to have 16 yes. ADA and you only have two parking spots. Oh, know. yeah, you're not going to, I mean, you're no, going to do one per building, right? Is that for, for handicap spaces? Yeah. Yeah, we can add one. Or two, so into it. right. So you wouldn't wind up with a total of sixteen. No, you would just. Oh yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. It's all the all of our apartments are designed to meet ADA requirements. Well, yeah, yeah. So okay, um, so if we want, then, 
from two to six? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I have four. No, four. And get rid of the get rid of the uh, the two that you have right now. Yeah, but we can move the two we have existing there. We can move them down. We can move it in front of, so we can have two in front of each of the first phase. Two in front of each of the first phase. Yeah. I, I was suggesting that. I mean, if you wanted to put two in front of, of, of uh, oh, you say one in front of each building, or just two in front of the first phase. So we all, right now we can do two in front of each phase and then we can see how the, how the market is while we're going to do the second phase. So we look at probably the yeah. so running I, out I, in these, these one to three years. So if we yeah. see there's an, really a high demand for extra handicap spaces at that time when we construct phase two, we yeah, can well, put two in. I, I two. guess I, I just want to make certain I'm understanding you correctly. You're saying the first phase, so in other words, one spot in front of each of the two buildings in the first phase. Yes, we'd be at one spot, one handicap spot in front of each building. Right. And yeah, then, I agree with, well, sorry, I, I was saying I agree with Mary. I, I don't want to, I, I would be hesitant to make this a condition. I mean, right. it's, it would <clears throat> seem to be a business decision to me, right. not something that's necessarily right. purview. Whenever well, we mess with parking, it gets us in trouble. Well, if you know, we if they have to have can request it, they would put them in. Yeah. They're very good about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, I guess, my, I yeah. did all, all Goni and I'm Maria, and of course, Craig's here. Yeah. He deals with this all the time. I deal with it with my wife all the time. The handicap spots just aren't in the right spot. Yeah. They just yeah. never, you know, so I'm just thinking, think ahead of time. Yeah. You know, I'm, th I'm thinking if you have the, the main entrance in the building, if you had one here and one here and this open in the middle, you know, you could even get a wheelchair, uh, like a, yeah. a, a, what do you call it, like a, a loading, a loading one, yeah. you know, on either way that way. The two handicap spots, you, you know, like right at the front, Yeah. because that's where they're going to, yeah. you know, you're probably going to have that ramp coming in yeah. anyways, where you can get right in, you know, yeah, and I'm just look, saying it's, it we'll just look into the actual location for the next meeting. Yeah, okay. That, that's yeah. you know that's all. Again, I know they're only saying two, but I just think that's going to be. Yeah, because I mean, ideally, where where you're going to want your handicap space is near the apartment, closest to the apartment that the handicapped person is going to be in. I know that's. I mean, that's <laughs> so really, it could be fluid as long as you're willing to move it. A few years, and it's sad to say, but sometimes they. Put it at the end of, the, I mean, I've been at these hotels where they just, like, they have them in the back, out in the back corner. I'm like, why would you have a handicap spot on it? <laughs> it's just, you know, because yeah. they needed to have one, so yeah. they put one. <laughs> but, you know, it's, you know, well, space what you're doing. Signed by apartment or just free for all? Or uh, typically we just do it free open, unless it becomes an issue. That's the only time you so really in the future, should you need to sign a handicap space provisionally to somebody living in an apartment, you can do that. Yeah. We can do that. That's yeah, that's true. That's something that's very true. easy we can do. Like if somebody's living in one of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. And and to respond to Mary's comment about uh not wanting to, or to condition spots for all four apartments, I, I, I would disagree with that. I would think that we would want to have uh, at minimum one spot for each each of the four buildings, and that's how we would approve it with that condition. And then if in the two years between the first two phases, if the applicant finds that there really isn't a need for those two handicap spots in the second phase, they can just come back to us and ask us to bury that, you know, to, to remove that condition. Well, you, you could even say you do keep them because then you may have someone visiting a tenant um, right. Especially since they've got an excess of spot of spaces and yeah, what they need. I, I, I'm I'm just saying that it's it, it's uh, it's easier to condition this up front and then remove the condition. Right. Yeah. What if we let them assess this and come back with a revised site plan and see what they're proposing? Right. Okay. By the next meeting. Yeah. Would that be fair? Yes. 
Let me just ask a question. That, that, that's fine. Let me okay. just ask a question of Jeremy. Uh, in terms of the construction, when you build these things, you're building two buildings and a parking lot to serve those buildings. And then um, it, is the parking lot that you're going to be building to serve the first phase, is that going to be the parking well, lot that, that you're going to end up with? We would build the parking lot for the full project besides the driveway into the garages for the townhomes. Right. All, all the other parking spaces we would build right away. Yeah. So in other words, uh, uh, the way that the, the plan is right now, your um, two ADA spots would be uh, across the parking lot from the two buildings. Yeah, as of right now, yeah, we'll look into that and get back to you guys for the next meeting. And and also, I would just con considering how construction goes because you'd be bringing in heavy equipment to lay foundations and so forth, or dip foundations and, and lay black and so forth uh, uh, on that parking lot. And, you know, it would be coming right up against the, the parking lot. So I, I just found it interesting to see how you plan to have it. Um, you just want to put down the top coat, right? With that construction. You would lay the base and not the top until construction was done. Right? Yeah, we would we would have to we'd go back and we would add, we wouldn't do sidewalks in that on the west side of the property. We would just have the parking spaces on that side. And then once uh, we go in and the foundations are in and the buildings are ready, we would have to go back and put the sidewalks in and make any repairs we need to in the parking lot. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Carrie, what other things do you have in your list? Uh, the only other thing is uh, with the underground detention field, um, I mean, we realize there's the eight inch uh, perforated pipe and then um, front <coughs> trains are not behind the eight unit. So we just were wondering if it had to do with the elevation and if that's why it didn't continue in that fashion. I will have to check the engineer on that one. Okay. There, there's right. no yard drains in, in the, you know, the French drain going into the collection system. And, you know, I, I point out to the board, um, if you didn't pick up on this, because it's not really explained too well in the notes, but uh, there are catch basins in the parking lot. And there are, uh, there's a French drain system all around three out of the four buildings in which there are yard drains. Uh, I actually looking at the plan. Uh, so behind the eight unit building, there is a 60 foot wide easement that yeah. we are not allowed to touch or construct anything on. Okay. That is why most likely to be favorable. It's like a gas pipeline, isn't it? It is. Yes. It's a gas line. Yeah, we were figuring utilities. Yes, the okay. uh, gas and I believe electric also. That's what, okay. Through we're there. wondering. Is that you yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so just to, uh, just, just to go on with, with what I was saying to the board, uh, the uh, the catch basin system drains the parking lot, and these yard drains will drain the yards, and they all of them empty into the catch basin system and the French drain system, empty into a large underground uh, storage basin. It's underneath the parking lot, and um, most of that's supposed to perk down into the ground, but any overflow. <clears throat> goes between the two buildings uh, through an underground eight inch pipe uh, mm -hmm. in, into the city storm system. So that's where that goes. And you know if you if you look at the one uh, sheet in the in the plan set that uh, that contains the elevations, if you look at the uh, southeastern corner or southwestern corner, pardon me of the lot, you notice that the adjoining properties are five feet higher in elevation than the southwestern corner. So in other words, uh, there there is substantial uh, possibility or opportunity, I should say, that um, storm water will drain from the adjoining properties <clears throat> onto the site. So ergo the need for this uh, French drain system. So, I just wanted the board to understand uh, what the stormwater management uh, system is for this this site. 
And, uh, you know, Ryan's looked through it and we, we talked with him ex extensively this afternoon and it's acceptable to him. So uh, there you have it, unless you have questions for him. Any questions on that, Stormwater? No. I have another question. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Any other items in your list, Carrie? Uh, Mark has one more question. Uh, garbage pickup, garbage. Where the where is the dumpster? Dumpster going to be? So the dumpster will be. Uh, is located right here. This dumpster will be exclusive for the apartment units. Okay. We just didn't like. We originally thought about putting it here. We just didn't like the look of that so we would just put it up here closer to the commercial buildings that way uh when they come and pick up the garbage oh, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at it backwards then okay so it's yep. going to be it'll be in front going to be right in front. yeah yeah we felt it was more convenient as people would think when they're driving out they can just direct bring it with them and throw it in the trash it's a closer walk for most of them we just putting it back there we just didn't feel it was the best location a lot of people driving towards the dumpster. <laughs> yeah, we, we just thought we normally would do it in that case scenario. We didn't want people looking in when they drive in. That you don't stare at it. This one's a little blocked with the building. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna fence the back or anything? Yeah, or you you would have it uh, enclosed and then look through the landscaping on one side. And what about the back towards the paper road? Is there gonna be anything? Yeah, I think there's. Down? Landscaping. Line of, line of trees back there. The landscaping sheet shows that there's going to be a line of trees planted back there. Sure. So the Marble Park, yeah, there is like uh, is there all trees. Yeah, there's all lines, trees. The rural trees, trees along our uh, property line. <laughs> I should mention that there is a so you're building the two ones well. To me, it looks like on the north side, but the top part of yeah, the, on the top part of the sheet okay, yeah. is where where those east, yeah, okay, good. And then the apartments just look out on it like that. Yeah, the back patio for those ones will look right now. Not so like that. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Apartments online. Beautiful apartments. Any other comments or questions? You, yeah. Did you have, what's the setback on the rear? Well, I believe it was somewhere between 15 and 20. I know they don't show it on here, but it was. Well, I asked I mean, because like when I was doing something in my shop, they told me that like that would have two, like I have in my shop, it's a corner. I have two fronts. So I have to honor yeah. the front setback on both sides. And does that. Mean, is yours general commercial? This uh, is and it has residential. Yeah, the way Ryan so, explained it though, because it borders the two streets, I had to honor. I had to honor it. It's two fronts, if you will. Yeah. So like at the front of my shop, where I wanted to build an office off the front, I had to honor a front mm -hmm. off Delaware and off from Front Street, mm -hmm. even though my address is Front Street. So that's why I asked the Paper Street of West Henley in the rear. Will that still meet the front setback? Well, there's the easement too that you're away from. So. There's no way I'm saying parallel to no, I mean, West sorry. Henley. Uh, back I'm here. saying parallel to uh, West Henley. So from that street, the paper street back to the corner of the building, what is the front the setback? Yeah, because I thought code signed off, but I mean I can double check. Yeah, that. I when I talked to Ryan when I submitted, he didn't it, mention it to me. Yeah. I think I'm only asking yeah. just because I know I ran into it on my own. It's yeah, a, I don't know if it's just the case because it's a I'll extension up. street, but he never mentioned that to me when, when I spoke to him. Yeah, so I don't, I don't remember what the front setback requirement is. I know on for front street it's 21 feet, like where I'm yeah. at. I know, I think it was, if I remember correctly. And I think this was a little yeah. different yeah. scenario because of it being general commercial and putting residential on it. Well, it's, it's worth investigating. I will. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Jake. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, because I'll, I'll double check and get the measurement. And you don't think there's ever a possibility that you would go out into that paper street? No. That you would go, okay. No. Never. Okay. No. Well, only, well, only another yeah. thing, too, safety-wise, 
it was, that, that, that would just be a yeah. people both, both wanting to go back there. Both me and our CEO drove back there. <laughs> we both looked at it. We said, we were to like, because on the survey, you see yeah, okay. there's a street, then we'd look, see it. And, and, it would be the and the cut person you Yeah, that would just be the cut through. That be, yeah, <laughs> just, that's all you'd have is. That's what it would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the trees will be nice. <laughs> yeah, no, trees. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, is there any reason, Carrie, for us to do anything other than an <laughs> uncoordinated seeker review? No. Okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion to designate the planning board as lead agent for uncoordinated seeker review. Move. Jay Aaron Reed. Okay, made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Uh, Carrie, you want to walk us through the uh, short form? Yes. We have the project and sponsor information with the description as uh, described. We have the um, applicant sponsor information being recognized as Ellicott Development only in 2020 LLC with the, um, the project address of 2101 West State Street. One, does the uh, proposed action only involve the legislative adoption of a plan, local law, ordinance, administrative rule, regulation? That's marked no. Does the proposed action require permit approval or funding from any other government agency? That's marked yes. City of Only and Planning Board. 3A, total acreage of the site. The proposed action is 3.32 acres. The total acreage should be physically disturbed is 0.9 acres. The total acre or acreage owned by or controlled by the applicant is 3.32 acres. All land uses that occur on or adjoining or near the proposed action uh, is marked commercial and residential. Yeah. Tom, did you hear that? No. Marking forest. I'm okay with that. I would also mark urban. Noted. Five is the proposed action of permitted use under the zoning regulations that's marked yes. Consistent with the adopted comprehensive or comprehensive plan that's marked yes. Is the proposed action consistent with the predominant character of the existing built or natural landscape that's marked yes? Is the site of the proposed action located in or does it adjoin a state listed critical environmental area that's marked no? Would the proposed action result in a substantial increase in traffic above present levels that's marked no? Are public transportation services available at or near the site of the proposed action? I'd like to uh, note the only area transit system runs on West State Street. So if we could change that to yes. Uh, C, are any pedestrian accommodations or bicycle routes available on or near the site of the proposed action? That's marked yes. Does the proposed action- Before we leave uh, uh, question eight, uh, I wanna return to this uh, issue of potential increases to vehicular traffic. Um, you know, I, I just want to have discussed this. I'm not, I'm not doubting that there will be a substantial increase, but I mean, we are talking ultimately uh, what? 44 four, four units. units. 42. 42 units, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, is it our estimation that that there there will be no significant uh increase in vehicular traffic because of that we do not see it being raising any significant traffic especially with it being at a intersection with the lights right there uh traffic going in and out of the property should be generally very easy and then we see it as mostly being, uh, I think we see just from based on conversations with bond ventures, a lot of this will be uh, seen like a graduate level college students or young professionals in the area looking to live here. So for most parts, it's, we don't see it being any substantial traffic, especially with residential apartments based on our experience, they typically don't add traffic level uh, or cause any traffic. It's more of the bigger retail or large uh, subdivisions that cause ma more major traffic issues. Are these one or two bedroom apartments? 
Yeah, so for the most part, it's, three, right? uh, there'll be four one bedrooms, uh, six two bedrooms, and two three bedrooms in the twelves, and then the uh, eight unit will be for one bedroom and four uh, two bedrooms. Okay. Even so our experience with the three bedrooms, typically you only get two cars for those. So I'll, I'll ask uh, the board if if you're <clears throat> if you're okay with uh, uh, this answer that there's not expected to be any uh, significant increase in traffic volumes. Well, I I would say that it's a significant increase over the current zero, but I don't see it as being a problem. So I think you could mark it as a yes, and then when we do our review, it's a. a low to moderate impact per it says substantial it increase in traffic yeah, so. well, again over zero is substantial but it's not significant it's not terribly significant so you you would like to see that mark yes 8a when you're because you, only because you're comparing it to no trips at all so the answer to my question is yes yes okay is everybody all right with that in the board? Yeah, I guess I'm okay with that as long as it's going to be low impact on the <coughs> yeah. Too, yeah. That that approach works for you, Craig. So yeah, yeah, because I see it as being a no to small impact. Okay. Okay. Kathy, okay. please show I'll note that change. Please make make certain that the that the minutes reflect that we did discuss the traffic volume issue on this. For sure. Okay. Gary? Okay. I know 8A has been changed to yes. 8B has been changed to yes. 8C remains the same as yes. And then um, moving on to nine, does the proposed action meet or exceed the state energy code requirements? That's marked yes. Will the proposed action connect to an existing public private water supply? That's marked yes. Will the proposed action connect to existing wastewater utilities? That's marked yes. 12A, does the project site contain or is it substantially contiguous to a building, archaeological site, or district, which is listed on the National or State Register of Historic Places, or that has been determined by the Commissioner of the Office of Parks, Rec, and Historic Preservation to be eligible for a listing on the State Register of Historic Places? That's marked no. 12B, is the project site or any portion of it located in or adjacent to an area designated as sensitive for archaeological sites on the New York State um, historic Preservation Office archaeological site inventory that's marked yes. And you know, you do note the re return from the mapper, and it mentions. Uh, oh wait, this is that's for the endangered species, but there's there's uh, never selected yes for that one. Yeah, um, what I could do my research on, I couldn't find any. If the um the reason being is the entire city is considered archaeologically sensitive. Okay. So that's the reason why I populate this. Yeah. Um, 13A, does any portion of the site of the proposed action or lands adjoining on uh, adjoining the proposed action contain wetlands or other water bodies regulated by a federal, state, or local agency that's marked no? With the proposed action... Just as a question for you, Jeremy, I mean, there is a, a substantial swath cutting across the site which uh, you've identified in the plan set as being marshland. Um, have you, uh, have you contacted any federal agency to see it, see whether or not that marshland is, is identified as a, as a wetland by any of these regulatory bodies? Uh, we looked on the, their federal website, their uh, GIS mapper. Right. For uh, all day, it was not shown. Okay. That works for me. You showed it in the minutes, Kathy. Thank you. Continue, Gary, please. Sure. 13B, with the proposed action physically alter or encroach into any existing wetland or water body, that's marked no. 14, identify the typical habitat types that occur on or are likely to be found on the project site. Suburbans checked. Um, Reed has requested forest and urban. 
make note of those. Is there anything else? No. Okay. 15, does the site of the proposed action contain any species of animals or associated habitats listed by the state or federal government as threatened or endangered? That's marked yes. Um, from them utilizing the EAF mapper, they've identified the blue breast darter and the longhead darter. I'm, I'm curious uh, what, th these are aquatic species. So what, what, what adjacency is, to, to any water body are we talking about here? <laughs> it didn't identify it, Tom, on the map, or it says, when you look at 13A, even when it says wetlands or other regulated water bodies, that instantly goes to no with a mapper. So it's really, I don't know what it would be identifying. Yeah. yeah. Is it on the other side? Is, what was it? Yeah, I, I'm assuming the proximity the from the edge of it to the river. Yeah. In any yeah. Way, on our site, these are not like present. Okay. 16. I don't know what question I was on. <laughs> You're on 16. Thank you. <laughs> Is the project site located in the 100 year floodplain that's marked no? Will the proposed action create stormwater discharge either from point or non-point sources? That's marked yes. Will the stormwater discharge flow to adjacent properties? That's marked no. Will stormwater discharges be directed to established conveyance systems? That's marked yes. Can we just describe what Tom explained before? Yes. For 17B. Okay, yes. Will stormwater discharges be directed to established conveyance systems, runoff, and storm drains? If yes, briefly, briefly describe. The overflow from the control overflow, right? Yeah. And the dry you don't you don't anticipate really there being ever much unless there's a heavy rainstorm, like we've been getting in the past couple of days. Yeah, the the there's the you want to mention there in the form of the uh Catch basins and yard drain system, French drain system, will go to the underground storage basin, which is a which is a perk basin, but overflows will go in will go uh, into the city storm system. You're installing that underground. Yes. Oh, you are. Yep. So I think we have one there. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I was writing that. All right, that's been noted. 18, does the proposed action include construction or other activities that would result in the impoundment of water or other liquids? That's marked no. Has the site of the proposed action or an adjoining property been the location of an active or cl closed solid waste management facility? That's marked no. Has the site of the proposed action or an adjoining property been the subject of remediation ongoing? or completed for hazardous waste that's marked no. Okay, are we all right with everything we've done here on part one? Everybody okay? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, we move to part two. The 11 questions, Carrie has completed the answers to, and she's identified no or small impact for each of the 11. I would note that the uh, traffic is which question? Question five. Um, so I'll give you a minute to look through that and see if you have any issues with uh, marking no or small impact for any of the 11. Everybody okay with those? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, given what we've learned on parts one and two, uh, we'll turn to part three. And I would entertain a motion to make a finding that the project will not pose any significant adverse environmental impact and accordingly to authorize issuance of a negative declaration on the project. So moved. Second. Craig and Mary. Seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. 
I would now entertain a motion to make a finding that we have a completed application. So moved. Mark and JR. Mark and JR. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Okay, time for the public hearing. Uh, Jeremy, you know how these things work with public hearing. Sometimes no, nobody shows up. Yeah. And, and so what we typically do if we have multiple public hearings is we put them, say, three minutes apart just in case nobody shows for your first one. Okay. And if, uh, you know, if, if, if the second one doesn't start for an hour, that's okay because yeah. – we can start at any time after the three minutes have elapsed. But the problem of it is, is if we start one at 6.30 and another one at 7.30 and nobody shows yeah. for the first one, then we're all sitting here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. So I, I would suggest that we uh, set the uh, second public hearing, public hearing for this project at, uh, on the 17th of October at 6.33. Does that work for you, Jeremy? Works for me. The board is that all right with the board? Yes. Yes. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. Second. Reed and Mary. Okay, Reed and Mary. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That's carried. Okay. We will see you back here on the seventeenth. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we have a, a couple of little homework items there for us. So. Yeah, please. Hey, Tom, just for the record, can I have your permission to sign your name to both EAS and initial them? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. So that in the minutes under yes. both. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's just been individually under both projects. You want to add that? Individually under. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you. Individually under each project. Oh, yes. Now, so I always try and catch your hard copies. Oh, we thank you very much. Wasn't that bad when we did Allegheny? I think I left down here at like 10 o'clock one night. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, well, you're in the city of Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the short part was a lot faster. Yeah, nice to see you too. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Carrie, are you back there? I can't see. Yes, sorry. Oh, I was up. putting the file back together. Yeah. Okay, uh, continue with our agenda. Um, miscellaneous and communications. Uh, first, 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 we have the video conferencing. Mm -hmm. so, if I understand this correctly, <laughs> Uh, council is asking us to uh, put together a resolution of our board uh, relating to video conferencing, um, or if you will, Zoom meetings. Uh, and secondly, uh, they're asking us to put together a list of procedures for video conferencing and Zoom meetings. So, uh, Kerry, why don't you tell us what you learned when you talked to the council of mayor's attorneys? Okay, actually, um, we had asked Kathy to um, do the follow up as she'd been working with um, Tiffany Taylor, which is the council clerk and uh, legal assistant here. So they did their research. Uh, Kathy followed up with uh, NICOM's attorney, and um, I do believe someone else as requested. So Kathy, if you want to give the board the update and the changes that you made to the resolution and to the procedures. One revision was made to the procedures and one was also to the resolution. After speaking with Wade Petramo from NICOM, he did instruct me and let me know that the planning board may determine by a majority of the board to 
record or video conference at every meeting due to extraordinary circumstances of our board members. That was the only thing that we had revised on these was to include that language so that it included every meeting. So um, obviously from my perspective, that's that's something that I would go along with because that's how I'm doing meetings these days is zooming. So, but, but, you know, it's, it's just because I'm the chairman, I'm not, you know, I'm only one person on the board. So uh, the majority of the board will have to determine this. So uh, I throw this open to the board. Uh, how do you feel about that? I think video conferencing is fine as long as the technology is working, which the last, ever since we've been holding meetings in here, I have not seen any problems with it. Um, I know we struggled a little bit in the council chambers mm -hmm. initially with mm -hmm. uh, hearing people, but I'm fine with this as it's laid out now. But supposedly those issues are being addressed through the new uh, hardware that the city is installing in the council room. Actually, we have Sheldon, which is a machine that you're on right now, that is addressing the issue. I see. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. It is very nice. Very nice. <laughs> they call him Sheldon. So what's it called? Sheldon. Sheldon. <laughs> He's got a name. <laughs> He's got a name. Yeah, the only, I mean, again, just, I don't know how well that would pick up people in the council chambers, but I'm sure if the city is investing in it. Which is they, what they've been using for the common council meetings. And it's worked well. And it's worked well, yes. Great. Now the addition that re revision does not change any of the other factors, which means that you have to be, you have to um, publish your site if you want to be um, counted towards the quorum. So it doesn't change any of the other requirements from the template from NICOM. Yeah, and that publication has to be in the same uh, media where you issue your uh, your meeting notices? Your notice. Right. Well, you do other, have four days, so. In other words, the, time, the Times Herald and any radio notification you make. Um, also, it would be on the uh, city uh, website. And, and I would suggest that, you know, it, it might be difficult to get the Times Herald to print um, you know, the Zoom login information, maybe, maybe you wouldn't, I don't know, but, but, um, you know, one way to get around that would be to say that, uh, you know, it's, it's a Zoom meeting that the public can attend. And if you want to get the Zoom login information, go to the city website. Yes, that's what is right now in the announcements to the media. It yeah. goes with the agenda and then also to let the public know they can get the link from the city website. Yeah, in, in in terms of Reed's other point that he was making there about as long as the uh, uh, technology works, uh, one nice thing about this new system is that it does require that we have four members present uh, physically. So if the technology doesn't work, then um, there are four members that can do business. I agree. So did it change that with the publication, you have to also open up your location to the public? No, that it's still, you have to open up your, your location to the public. So you would have to open up your home to the public, Tom, <coughs> and count as a vote? As no, a, as as just a as a quorum. quorum. Uh, you can still count as a vote. Saying. Once we have a quorum in the room, they can both vote, but they can't count towards a quorum unless they publish their location. Right. Okay. And the, and the procedure specifically refers to... Uh, these secondary private locations, privately owned locations. Uh, but it, it does, it's a, the, the language is a little interesting because it says uh, there's reference to, uh, uh, let me see here. Can't find it in the, uh, in the resolution, but I, 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 I do see it in, uh, In, in point one in the procedures, 
uh, it make, makes references to physical present at one of the designated public meeting locations, plural. So it, it does make yeah. possible the, the ha having more than one public location simultaneously for the uh, planning board meeting to occur at. So I just point that out. I found that interesting that that was included. You know, I'll also note that there is a. Imagine anybody wanting to divulge that. Uh -huh. There's a there's a requirement for uh, notifying if you're if you're going to uh, if you're going to Zoom, you have to notify. What is it five days in advance? Four days in advance? Four days. Four days, and yeah. and since the notifications come out five days in advance, my suggestion to my fellow board members is that when you get the email from Kathy uh, for the next meeting, for, for any meeting, that you immediately reply uh, if, you, if you're intending on doing a Zoom. OK, so you'll meet I, the four day up, up front meeting. I would question that four days, though, Tom, because of the language that the open government documents say. Uh, it's. Uh, to, 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 to or see including disability illness caregiver responsibilities or any other significant unexpected factor and it could become unexpected within 48 hours or less even i mean that's covered in three of the procedures the if extraordinary circumstances present themselves on an emergent basis within four days of meeting Mm -hmm. We can update the notice as soon as practical. Oh, it's uh, okay. The second section of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, 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 it's ironic. I had that yeah. specific four days underlined <laughs> as opposed to the ones ahead of it. Uh, okay. Wouldn't it be practical? Well, it, it, practical? So it has a contingency for that then. It should be. I, I don't see that because it, it's, it, I mean, it still says, uh, within four days of a meeting. Meaning less than. Right. Well, I, I guess that's true. So it, it still still allows you to get to get sick or something. For, you know, and then it's still attend. <laughs> well, you can still attend if you get sick, I guess. Right, hey. but you, it'll yeah. then be a Zoom. Yeah. You know, New York State gave us a template. Yeah, that, was <laughs> that all explains wording. anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what the what the template means. <laughs> okay, so you're among many. <laughs> I guess my question is: so matter if you're going to be online at any time, you have to give a four day notice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Unless, unless, unless something comes up after the four well, days. Well, yeah, but I, I'm just saying, you know, on, on a normal basis. Standard procedure. You know, yeah. Standard procedure is four day notice. Four day. If I'm yeah, gonna be and then if Kathy not, then we'll just... have to update the notice. That's what she'll have to do. Okay. If it's... And if we don't have a quorum, we can't meet. Then we have and to reschedule. Have to, so, yeah. Yeah. so that gives you time to figure out a quorum, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I scrambled. Like. Call, I called everyone. You called everyone. Yeah. yeah. And also, I ask that we change the word practicable. I don't know what it, I mean, it's their wording from New York State. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, what is that but word? If you it's want to change it, then practicable. Yeah, I guess you're practicing. Practical. practical. That is an I think you're practicing. Word. It is. Practical. It yeah. is. It's a word. It is able to be done or put into practice successfully. That's funny. That's what I was just trying to find my darn app. I couldn't find my dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. We can change the word if we want. We can Honestly, it. it's the same thing, but if we like practical, we can do that. Let's see, notice as soon as that. Let's get to New York State. We don't get in trouble. <laughs> oh, Something changes later. We, we like this. Oh, no. <laughs> I just, honestly, vague is good for us. <laughs> The, the other the other thing I would note in this is that there's a requirement to videotape all these things. Yeah. yeah. And I believe that they have to be placed on the website, right? 
They are. Yes, our IT department, what trims it, like if there's, if we how start long, at 625. How long are they retained? Uh, I think for our well, the state records. Would <laughs> I would think like maybe seven years. Seven years? I don't know. Tom. We have a records and retention officer that handles that. Yeah. And, uh, it's our city clerk. One last thing that occurs to me is that there's also a requirement that uh, they can't do transcripts of these meetings. If someone requests it, yes. So, oh, it, is, it, is that required for all meetings? No. It says if um, it used to be not anymore. Upon can and transcribed upon request. So if someone requests it to be, then I would have to yes. Okay. Like at the beginning of COVID, she had to transcribe all of it, and then the um, the what, mandate changed. What is the city uh, local law state in that regard? Just want to make certain that we're con consistent with that. Is that a full-on transcribing or? Yes, yeah, she was doing a full-on transcription during. Not COVID. just minutes, huh? No, it was in addition to the minutes. Oh. I was, yeah, because I was reviewing our transcription too. Yeah, oh, was, the recordings must be available for minimum five years. Five years. And recordings must be transcribed upon request. It's under four B on the Common Council mm -hmm. resolution. Yeah. It's digital. Are you able to use the Zoom transcription? Or B? Oh, I don't know. I haven't tried it. But it was awful. You but did it. Was, it was kind of in the very beginning we did, but I'm thinking that it's been two years now. Yeah, yeah. maybe they improved it. Maybe they improved it because it didn't work before. No. Where Where is the transcription language in the resolution? Four uh, B in the Common Council one. I'm not. Uh, I'm not seeing that. So section three, paragraph four, uh, sub paragraph B. It's the second page of the local law. It's it says the, the minutes must be meetings must be recorded, recordings must be posted within five business days. The recordings must remain available for a minimum of five years, and recordings all must be transcribed upon request. Okay. All right. Do we have a clause in ours about if the governor <clears throat> declares a state of emergency that we can be completely video remote? Well, if he does that, then that'll supersede this. Right, right. It'll wipe out everyone. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I guess that's as much as I wanted to discuss this, but if you know, <laughs> I'm happy to continue to discuss it. If not, not good. Uh, I, I guess you this? what you're looking for us is is a is a motion to uh, to adopt the uh, this resolution and the and the procedures. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Read and Mary. Made and seconded. Any discussion on this? Yeah, I, I just want to identify it. It says resolution number, it's blank. It'll be our first one of the year, so we should put it in 01 22. Okay. All right. And uh, will this be available on the website? Yes, we can add it to the website. Yeah, because I'll probably lose this this language. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on the planning board web page. It's going to be right on the web. Yeah. <laughs> we had also. I'm sorry. Oh, Tom, did you also want to do a resolution regarding um, this using the state code for the parking spaces for the two projects, or do you want to do that next time? You mentioned doing a resolution or a book. A finding. A finding. We could do it. Today or we could do it two weeks from or three weeks from today. Whatever is your pleasure. You want to just get it out of the way? So I mean, if I we've be, been doing it, we still have a motion. We still have a motion on the table. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, let's call this question unless there's any discussion on this. 
Okay, I'm hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's carried. Now, what's your pleasure with respect to these, uh, the state code on the nine by 18 dimensionality for parking spaces? If I would suggest we do it when we're doing those projects and okay. it's consistent in the minutes and everything. Right, so, uh, uh, can't you just reflect that that's something that we're gonna do at the next, uh, next time we meet? Anything else? Uh, I, I would also note um, training requirements, including the harassment um, uh, web training. And uh, I, I still have to take that myself. So uh, please complete that if you haven't done so. Uh, if not, these separate from the procedures. I don't know if there are any upcoming general training uh, this one. requirements. Any other items of business? Uh, nice yeah. short change. <laughs> <laughs> Eight forty-one, so we're probably well into the fifth or sixth inning by now. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I appreciate everyone's uh, patience for a long evening meeting here, but I, I think that we uh, we uh, actually uh, you know, looked at all the aspects of these projects that we really needed to discuss today, and it, it was worth uh, the expenditure of our of our time. So thank you all for, for that. Uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion move. Mark and Craig. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And adjourn. We will see you next on the 17th. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And will you be here?